good. All right, Shalom. Shalom. We want to start out by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakakodash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the Akim out there pushing the word of sincerity and the truth. It's the brothers uh, here from Great Millstone, Atlanta. You know, we have a you know a lesson going into basically what do you bring to the table? Um, basically, as a, that's that is a, a proposition of a question. What do you bring to the table? And that's something that we all, as individuals, have to always ask ourselves: What do we bring to the spiritual table of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shot? You know, the Lord He He bestowed each and every one of us brothers particular gifts, and it's all about us exposing it uh, within ourselves and, and pushing it to uh, uh, you know wake up the, the hopeful elect. You know, because you have a certain gift. Every brother and, and every brother's gift is not the same. It tells you that in Corinthians, the twelfth chapter, about how. Uh, one brother might be the ear, one brother might be the eye, one brother, every brother has their different cognitive function in the in the body, but if you, the, the thing is, if you have that uh, 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 that trait, so to speak, or if you're that member of the body, you have to, uh, you have to use that ability that, that you have. Say for instance, that you're the eye, well, you should be watching. Say for instance, that, that you're the ears, you should be listening, you should be, or, or also, if you're the eyes, you should be observing, you know? If you're the, uh, the the feet you have to do with with the feet do the feet is mainly uh for walking all right you know things of that nature i'm just you know saying it parabolically and it's, in certain cases literally so it's the same thing in the spirit with, with brothers every brother has their specific gift that the lord has, has blessed you from the heavens and that's why it's known as talents in the new testament and when you look up that uh the the value of a talent a, ta a talent is a, a very valuable it's a very valuable amount. If I'm not mistaken, last time I looked it up, it was like they said at, at, at a point of like a million dollars, 1.8 million dollars. So the Lord gave us a large investment. He invest, invested in us individually, and it's all about us as the commodities to to flip, to increase, to appreciate. So you uh, you got that? Uh, this is Proverbs nine and one. It says, "Wisdom have built in her house. Mm -hmm. She have hewn out her seven pillars." Right, and we're all in the house of wisdom. This is the uh, the house of Sophia. All right, it says she have uh, hewn out seven pillars, which the, the seven pillars represents perfect stability. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and we are inside that house of perfect stability, and what should we be doing, continue? Verse two, she have killed her beast. She have killed her beast. She have mingled her wine. She have mingled her wine. She have also furnished her table. She have furnished the table. So the table is, is a setting for guests, all right? And we are those guests that the Lord has appointed, appointed, and adopted into the uh, the marriage. That's why in the New Testament, Yahweh Shah uh, likens us to coming unto a great supper. He told us the apparel that we were supposed to uh, dress in, what we're supposed to bring, which these are plenty of uh, ingredients that wisdom has actually uh, uh, spoke, is spoken of in the Book of Proverbs about what the uh, the banquet or the feast has has to offer: wine. Beasts, which is uh, uh, clean meats, all right, herbs. You know, when you look at, and even when you look at uh, uh, medieval times, uh, even even Renaissance times, times with uh, kings and, and Europe and things of that nature, they they would have those large uh, feast banquets, and you you would see how uh, uh, opulent it was. You know, it have all kind of uh, variation of fruits. They would have the top vegetables. They would have top uh, beasts. You would have the top chefs from around the province that would. Uh, that will cook the food for the for the uh, sake of the guests and for the guests to be satisfied. So it's the same thing with us. You know, this brother may be the wine. You know, and if he's the wine, then he has to he has to be make sure that he's the best wine that there is, man. You know, same thing. If if, if I represent the the uh, you know, say for instance, I'm the bread, so to speak. You know, you don't want you don't, you don't want to uh, give out molded bread. Cause say for instance, you eating good. You know, you sipping the wine, you know, you get eating the meat, and then you, you know, you drinking, the, you know, eating fruit and things of that nature, then you grab some of the bread and it's molded, you're gonna throw everything up, yeah, man. Yeah, the whole dinner up. And fuck the whole dinner up. <laughs> you gonna end up getting up and storming out, especially depending on uh, the level of e echelons that, that, the, uh, that the waiter is actually serving. Because mm -hmm. uh, some, some individuals, if it's something messed up <coughs> with the plate, then they don't, they don't wanna eat nothing at that uh, particular point, man. Like, give me my check. I want my money back, man. I'm not paying for this meal. This food, this food was molded. Right. And what do they do? They have a certain, depending on the restaurant, they have certain health inspectors. Mm -hmm. You know, 
Hey, that's why the uh, scriptures say take heed on how you build. You know, because it's important, you know, on what you, uh, like the brother, man, like the, um, the uh, brother is going into, uh, uh, it's important to uh, uh, to carry this, this truth in a particular manner. Mm -hmm. So 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 what you're offering is acceptable um, to the most high. Man. That's right, bro. And it's spiritual because we're right behind, the, uh, right in front of, excuse me, a restaurant that's vacant. You know, mm -hmm. more than likely it was something that that was the cause of this this, this restaurant being vacant. Whether the service, whether the, the, the traffic, however particular way, you know, this is a prime example, and we don't want to be that vacant lot, so to speak. We want to have this thing, have the uh, this thing fully occupied, so to speak, occupied for the elect, flourish. Yep. Continue. Okay. Uh, it's verse three. She has sent forth her maidens. Mm -hmm. She cried. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Yeah, and what's the, the maid's job? To, to make sure things are clean and very tight. That's the primary job of the maid. You know, make sure everything is inspected properly. You know, like even when you look at ancient slave movies, they would have the maidens constantly cleaning, constantly monitoring, and making sure that the guests were provided for. You know, if the water is getting low, they don't even let the water get empty. You know, if the water gets halfway, they fill it right back up. You know, if the, if the food is, um, you know, looking like, depending on, you know, the, the feast, it looks like they're, uh, the food is uh, uh, basically being eaten, they'll, they'll remove it. It might not even be all the way done. They might just remove it and get you a, a whole new plate, you know? And it's the same thing in the spirit. That's why I started off with the apostles and the elders. These videos is constant, man. The spirit is always coming out constant, and you can't even eat them now, man. Okay. You can't eat and say, all right, I'm satisfied, I'm done. There's no more eat. Scripture says how uh, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of his mouth. Yeah. And your body has to eat constantly. If you don't eat, what happens? You become uh, malnourished, you know, nutritionally uh, deficient. So, the, the and, and when you eat, you want to eat properly. You have you have to have a certain diet, diet uh, dietary regimen yeah. that you have, you have to go off of so that you eat and your actually your body is actually being. Um, built up you know while you're actually eating because it's not just this isn't just an eating a pleasure yeah. you know this ain't chips and, and, and you know sodas and yeah, monster yeah you got it about me say because you were talking about the nutrition aspect it's like meal prepping and having a meal plan mm -hmm. in order to re uh, retrieve a certain goal you have to feed your body with the correct fuel to get the muscles you want yeah. Now there's some, that, that's, that's spiritually, if you're listening to the apostles and elders, you're on a meal plan right now, mm. you know what I'm saying? Whatever they come out with is what you eat, and then you work it out through applying it in everyday life. Now you could get spiritually obese yeah, really. if you start listening to the junk food that's out there. There's a <coughs> lot of junk food, mm. Israelite teachings out there. Yeah. If you start d dipping and dabbling in that, you become an obese individual in the spirit, mm. you know? And ultimately, what's next? heart attacks, mm. uh, heart failure, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Uh, cardiac arrest is what it's called. Yeah. You start having that in the spirit, and you mm -hmm. start relapsing. Yep. You know? hey, even, we even seen those guys who did, remember those guys did that lesson with eating all that junk food and shit? Because like, hey, that's, that's how they handle the truth, man. That's right. You know, they don't handle it in a, uh, a charismatic. king, yeah, uh, 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 like say it again now. Charismatic. Yeah, ch charismatic, man. Yeah. You know? Hey, you're supposed to uh, uh, have a, a kingdom like a king like mine when when uh, in dealing with the truth. That's right. That's the main uh, point of that. Uh, yeah, kind of was it on that. I have uh, I have a few accounts, and this is like his accounts go towards giving like an acceptable offering. Okay. So the first account is this. He's gonna be quick. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter thirty one. This is uh, pertaining around uh, King Hezekiah, who used wisdom and was, was one of the, one of the most righteous kings that that were written about. It says um, Second Chronicles thirty one and four. It says, moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to give the portion of the priests and the Levites that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. That's right. Verse five. Hey, and guess what? We the spiritual Levites. You know, we're not physically Levites. We don't come out of the well, some brothers come out of the lines of, of Levi, which are the modern day Haitians, but the scripture says, well, we're a nation full of kings and priests. Mm -hmm. And when you deal with the, the priesthood, the priesthood had the best offerings and they had the best portions of the land. It says, um, because they, they would get the hook. Yeah. They get the, you know, 
Yeah. It says uh, verse 5. Which a lot of it was their rights, but a lot of those Levites, they started to bask in their, yeah, they abused their uh, authority. That's why right, you got to the Malachi. Mm -hmm. You know, right. it's like, uh, it's like So verse 5, it says, And as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of corn, wine, like the, uh, the, the deacon brought out in Proverbs, uh, and oil and honey and all the all of the increase of the field and the type of all things brought they in abundantly. Mm -hmm. Verse six it says, and concerning the children of Israel and Judah that dwelt in the city of Judah, they also brought in the tent the type of oxen and sheep and the type of holy holy things which were con uh, consecrated unto the Lord their power. Consecrated, yep, yeah, made holy. Mm -hmm. It says and laid them in heaps. So the, when you go into the word heaps, uh, it means uh, in piles. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like a, a, like a saved, in. abundantly in heaps in piles. But it was the first fruits. It was the it was the right. Nothing was in a blemish or anything. They brought something to the table. Yeah. You know, like like the deacon was bringing out. You got to bring something to the table with acceptable uh, sacrifice. Mm -hmm. You know, um, Salakia. The other account, I'm not gonna read it. Everybody knows it, but Cain and Abel. Yeah. You know, and uh, the Lord said it didn't look well upon Cain, uh, uh, Abel's, Salak and Cain's sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But Abel's, he did look good. You know, well upon. Yeah. You know, that's because Abel brought something to the table. Mm -hmm. You know, an acceptable sacrifice. Yes. Yeah. And this sacrifice now is spiritual. Uh, get that Romans 12. Romans 12 and 1 it says I beseech you therefore brethren uh -huh. by the mercies of the most high that ye present your bodies so like, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice right so in today's time us brothers individually we commit ourselves as a sacrifice mm -hmm. you know we don't we don't have we're not under that Levitical law where we have to bring these specific offerings because who has a calf today you know who has a goat you know who has these different livestock and turtle doves and all these different um cattle that they could present to the priest and where's the priest today uh, you know the, the levites the levites are going on that's why the lord rearranged the ordinances and he made everything spiritual through giving his physical through uh actually disposing his physical blood on the on the cross mm -hmm. after that everything became spiritual and our and our spiritual offerings is with the lord here this is the sweet savior unto yahweh shimei was shot and you have certain Israelites that's giving off a stinky stitch, man. Yeah, that's right. You know, what is it? It's, it's smoking my nose, so to speak. So the Lord, the Lord smells, smells everything, man. He knows who, who his men is. You know, you, you see that? Like, yeah, that's, that's, that's the smell I want to smell right there, man. You know, certain Israelites, like, what the fuck is that, man? <laughs> they, cook, they cooking pork on the altar? Yeah. You no? Know? That's why, uh, that's why uh, Amos 5 and 21 said, mm -hmm. you know, it says, uh, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy. Holy, which the word holy means separate. So you have to be separated from the filth and the debauchery that this, that this society brings. You know, and even when you look at like cookers, uh, excuse me, cooks and chefs, individuals that's that's uh, like a master chef, what's their whole thing about being clean? What is, as the saying goes, cleanliness is, is next to godliness. So when they're in that kitchen, they don't have stuff all over the place. Oh, that's why, uh, you know, when you go into restaurants, you know, every restaurant like to have that score up. Yeah. Right? You know, because, hey, believe it or not, it's people that actually come in, and if you got like an 89, they won't eat there. You know, so that's why it's important that you uh, uh, take heed on how you uh, um, build in the truth, man. You know? If I may say, with the cleanliness, read uh, Leviticus, the 16th chapter, when uh, Aaron had to atone for his, his sons. Mm -hmm. Almost every other verse, the Lord said, "Okay, now take your clothes and wash them, and wash your and wash yourself. Do this, 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 and the third. After, go wash yourself. Do this, 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 and the third. After, go wash yourself." He 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 made it a an order and a repetition that you got to be clean, physically and spiritually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. It says, "Holy." Acceptable unto the Most High. Yeah, in order to be uh, in order to be acceptable, you have to be holy, though. You know, so that's the first and foremost. 
So we have to separate ourselves so the Lord will actually accept the sacrifice that we're all individually uh, bringing. Because even when we're in the camp, that's the synchronicity, you know? And, and the Lord actually, like when you're dealing with Israel, Israel will go to certain wars, and, and if they lost the war, like in a time over there, if I'm not mistaken, um, Judges or Joshua, Josh. when they lost that war, they knew it was something unclean that was in the midst. Yeah. So what did they have to do? They had to go through all the tribes, tribe by tribe. They figured out it was the tribe of Judah. They had to go through the families, mm -hmm. right? They figured out which family it was. They figured out, they went uh, and picked through the people and they figured out it was Achan, right? All right. And the unclean thing that he brought into the congregation was the Babylonian uh, garment and the, the shepherds. God. And after that, they after, after they killed them, you know, and basically destroyed his family, they went back to wars and they started to uh, wax they successful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing with uh, the brotherhood too. You know, you as an individual, your whole, your whole initial job is to be as clean and as pure as possible, not only for yourself, but for the men around you. That's right. Same, same thing in the, the accounts of the Maccabees, where all the men who died, they had a, an idol in their pocket. They were unclean. Unclean. Yeah. And that's why that's why now, you know, if the brother saying you going off, that's why you're gonna get that rebuke rebu rebu or reproof. You know, and if you keep going off, you're gonna get casted out. That's right. You know, because you as being unclean. That's right. Or you'll watch these uh chef shows and you'll see all uh, the, the candidates and they might get to a certain uh point where it's it's always a cut. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's, you know, the chef is good but he ain't good enough, you know. Yeah. He didn't even make the cut, so they, they gotta they go to the next season. The top chefs, they got to bring their A game. Yeah. And then it's, it's certain uh, mm -hmm. chefs, so they'll throw something randomly out there. Yeah. All right? Cook that up. See how you deal with that. You got you know, how to chop it, clean it. Yeah. You got a certain time limit to make sure it's perfectly garnished yeah. and prepared. And you, what you have, you have judges that's judging the matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the, the judges in today's time is really the spiritual angels that judge. It tells you in Proverbs 15 and 3, they're, they uh, the eyes of the Lord are beholding the good and the evil. So they judge, they're looking above, they're seeing, they're observing you, seeing have you been um, actually gradually increasing or decreasing. Yeah. And they take that message as the angels to the most high and they give the reports. Yeah. And the Lord, you know, all right, his brother's been praying, he's been doing good, he's fit to receive more blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, he's fit to actually get another talent, so to speak. Mm -hmm. All right, and a certain man, like, oh, he's been being a straight up fucking nigga, man. Yeah. Gonna take everything away from him, put demons on him, man. Mm -hmm. You know, have him spaz out, have him a. Uh, 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 you know, question the doctrine and, and, and get rid of them, man. God. Hey, cause just to add to your point, how you brought up the cooking shows, the judges, they, they're they not looking at that. Even though they're looking at the, the final outcome, they're looking how you're preparing uh, the, the meal too, man. Yeah, presentation. You know, it's about, it's, it's, it's about everything, not just certain parts, man. Right. You know, cause Jake, Jake know how to slither and get through things, man. And the, the scriptures say, uh, the, the eyes of the Lord, the eyes of the Lord are 10,000 times brighter than the sun, roughly paraphrasing. That's right. You know, so. Oh, that's the main point? Uh, yeah, that was the main point. Okay, come on. Sorry, start around. Yeah. Uh, Psalm Solomon, chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Oh, oh, that, that work as my brother, mm -hmm. that sucked the breast of my mother. Yeah, oh, the, oh thou that were the, uh, the, read that over. It says, oh, that, oh, that thou wert as my brother. Oh, that thou wert as my brother. Continue. That sucked the breast of my mother. That sucked the breast of my mother. Continue. When I should find thee without. When I should find thee without. And, and we're outside right now. We're without. So you will find brethren of a particular, of your actual similar kindred outside. And that's where you would present the word unto. Continue. I would kiss, I would kiss thee. I would kiss thee. Meaning what? Embrace thee. I will bring thee closely unto the bosom. Continue. Yeah, I should not be despised. I should not be despised. Continue. Verse 2, I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. You read about the mother's house, Big Mama's house in Proverbs, the ninth chapter. And what's in the um, uh, mother's house? Continue. It says, who would Because really, wisdom is our mother. That's why it says, uh, wisdom in, in Sirach, how wisdom will love thee more than thy mother does. Because this is what nurtures you, this is what brings you up under the bosom to drink the breast, which is the nourishment of the milk of the scriptures. Continue. It says, uh, would uh, who would instruct me? Who would instruct me, which the word instruct, struck is uh, in is in, of course, and struck the structure. So this word, it, it tends to structure you and instruct you so that you can be upright. 
because prior to this world, you're basically an animal. You own all fours, man. You know, team. Uh, it says, I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine. Drink of spiced wine. Of the juice of my pomegranate. The juice of the pomegranate. And if you, when you read these different scriptures, anytime it's talking about the table, it's always fine dining, man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's certain drinks, it's certain, uh, uh, and when you even deal with uh, spice wine or pomegranate that's full of antioxidants, it's very clean. You know, it's a real good um, drink to actually drink after, after meals, before meals, and things of that nature. So, you know, we even reading about kings that actually were, were you know, they, they dealt with fine dining. They dealt with uh, particular banquets and things of that nature. And they know how things are supposed to be laid out. They know how guests are supposed to present themselves, you know? You ain't supposed to be dirty, all kind of barbecue sauce on your face. You know, you, that's why when, when you're dealing with kings and things of that nature, they have certain, you know, they have to bib themselves with the, uh, the napkin. You know, sit a certain way, certain posture. You know, you have the certain, not, even when you're dealing with the cutlery, it's certain uh, knives, certain spoons, certain drinking, certain wine glasses. You, you, you got niggas putting uh, 211 in, in, in fucking wine glasses, man. You know, totally, totally off. That's why the Lord is casting certain guys out. It says, his left hand should be under my head. His left hand should be under my head, team. And his right hand should embrace me. And his right hand should embrace me. Small. Um, I'll read it. I'll just finish the phone. It says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love until he pleads. Right, and, and the daughters of Israel represents the men of Israel and the women of Israel also. Because we are basically under the Lord's shadow. And he said to not stir, stir up uh, my Lord until he pleases. So it's a particular time that the Lord is going to come and that he's going to uh, uh, do that which he seems fit, which is bringing his elect unto the pasture. And when you read about the pasture, you read about the pasture in Psalm th uh, 23rd. It's still dealing with greenery. It's still dealing, dealing with certain herbs. It's mm -hmm. dealing with certain things for your body to flourish and for your body to uh, actually gradually uh, get better, so to speak. Because mm -hmm. this thing is from glory to glory, man. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not de decreasing. This thing is increasing. Mm -hmm. And we have to increase as this thing co constantly increases. That's right. You know, it's more of that's really, that's really the main point. Yeah, yeah, so this is all we have for Akim, you know, just as a question, what do you bring or what do you provide for the table? You know, for us brothers individually to get better, to hone in on our particular gifts and abilities and to expose it to the best of our ability for the sake of ourselves and for the sake of the, the brethren around us. That's right. So we want to end it by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Yahweh, 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 Yahwe